Okay, everybody, we have a very important video today, and that's on functions in C. All a function is, is a reusable section of code that can be invoked, also known as calling a function. Functions are nice because we don't have to repeat ourselves. We write some code once, and then we can reuse it whenever we want. Here's our task. We have to sing the happy birthday song three times. First, we're going to do this without using functions, and then you'll see how they're helpful. We'll begin with a printf statement, a new line character. We'll output happy birthday to you. We'll copy and paste this line again. Happy birthday, dear. And then we'll insert somebody's name here later. Happy birthday, dear name. Happy birthday to you. One more line. We'll say... You are some age years old. Then I'll add another new line character. All right, let's see what we have so far. Here's one verse of our happy birthday song. Now, if we have to sing this three times, well, we're going to do a lot of copying and pasting. That's two, and that's three. We have our happy birthday song not once, not twice, but three times. So we have accomplished our task, but this is a lot of code to write. And in programming, we try and follow the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. We're repeating ourselves three times, even though we don't necessarily need to. Wouldn't it be nice if we could write this code once and then reuse it whenever we need? Well, that's the purpose of a function. Let's cut these last two verses of our song. And outside of the main function, we're going to create a whole new function. You start with the return type. Return types are going to be the next lesson. For now, we'll write void. There is no return type. Then we need a name for this function. It should be descriptive of what you're doing. Well, we're singing happy birthday. Let's call it the happy birthday function. Add a set of parentheses, then a set of curly braces. Any code you want to reuse, you're going to paste within this function. Let's cut our happy birthday song and then paste it. Now, if we were to run this program, nothing's going to happen. There's no output. In order for us to use this function, we have to call it. You type the function's name, in this case, happy birthday, and follow it with a set of parentheses in order to call it. If you don't have that set of parentheses, you won't actually call it. So be sure to add those. And that does work. We have one verse of our happy birthday song. I like to think of the parentheses as a pair of telephones talking to each other. You have to call a function to use it. You have to talk to it. We still have to sing our happy birthday song three times. All we have to do is call the happy birthday song three times. And there we go. We have song happy birthday once, twice, three times. A function is nice because you can write some code once and reuse it whenever you want. You just have to call it. Next, we'll discuss arguments. Suppose I would like to insert a user's name and their age here. If I were to set up some variables, I'll create a name variable, a character array of name. Set it equal to some name, whatever your first name is. And some age, int age. We have a variable of name and a variable of age. If I was to place my name here, I need to insert a format specifier of s because we're working with strings. I will insert my name variable. Same thing with my age variable. It's an integer, percent %d for the format specifier. We will insert our age. All right, let's see what happens. I'm calling my happy birthday function. Well, we get some errors. Name is undeclared. Age is undeclared too. Functions can't see inside of other functions. Our happy birthday function has no idea what name and age is. To make our happy birthday function aware of what these variables are, we have to pass them as arguments to the function. Within the set of parentheses, Place whatever you would like to send this function. I'll send our name and our age. 
However, there's one more step. Our function isn't set up to take these two values. You need a matching set of parameters. Within the parentheses of the function name, you have to list the data type of what you're receiving. We're receiving an array of characters, char, then you need a name for what you're receiving. In this case, name. This is a character array. That's the first parameter. We are also receiving an int of age. And this should work. Happy birthday, dear. Your first name, in my case, bro. You are, whatever your age is, years old. So that did work. Arguments are what you send a function, but you need a matching set of parameters so that function is set up to receive those arguments. Arguments are what you send a function. Parameters are what the function expects to receive. It's really easy to mix up the two. At times I'll accidentally call these parameters, but people usually know what you're talking about. But technically they're different. Here's a trick to help you remember that these are arguments. In order to use a function, you have to call it. You pass arguments to a function. It's kind of like you're arguing over the phone. Now, what if we didn't pass in any arguments? We have some parameters set up for our function, but we're not sending any arguments. Well, we get an error. Too few arguments to function. Happy birthday. What if the order of our arguments was wrong? I'll pass in age, then name. Our arguments weren't compatible with the types of our parameters. When passing in arguments, you do have to pay attention to the number of arguments you're sending and their data type. One trick you can do with the parameters is you can rename them. They don't necessarily have to be the same. For example, let's rename name as birthday boy when inside the scope of this function. Let's rename age as years old. And this would work too. We still have our name and our age. With your parameters, you can rename the data you're receiving. It won't permanently change these variable names. All right, let's take this a step further. Let's accept user input. We'll need the help of the following header file. Include string.h. I'll set my name to have a size of 50, 50 characters, and I'll initialize it so it's an empty string. I'll set age to be zero. Now, before we call the happy birthday function, we'll get some user input. We'll need some prompts. Printf, enter your name. Since we're accepting a string, we'll use fgets. So fgets is a function too. That's why we have the set of parentheses afterwards. We have to call it. It's a built-in function. We have to pass in our name as an argument. The size of our name, we'll use the function of size of, pass in our name, then std in. Then just to remove the newline character from the input buffer, we can do the following. Take our name with a set of straight brackets, get the length of our name with the string length function, pass in our name, minus one, set the ending character to be a null terminator. Then let's get our age. Print F, enter your age. Then we have to use scanf to get an integer. Scanf, the format specifier is D, at the address of age. And that should be everything. So now a user can type in a name and an age. Let's test it. Enter your name. I'll say SpongeBob. Enter your age. SpongeBob seems like he's about 30. Here's our song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear SpongeBob. Happy birthday to you. You are 30 years old. All right, everybody, those are functions. Functions are a reusable section of code that can be invoked, also known as calling a function. Arguments can be sent to a function so that it can use them. Basically speaking, you can write some code once and use it whenever you want. You just have to call it. And well, everybody, those are functions in C.